Hey, welcome back. Uh, we seem to have uh, been able to blow the cobwebs out of the cables or whatever uh, was the reason. Of course, you know that's a joke. And um, our guest is um, Honorable Donald Ojogu, uh, two-time information commissioner in Ondo State and uh, Ile, the Elijah Eseodo Federal Constituency uh, APC representative uh, elect. So uh, just before you know, we started having issues with the audio, Simon from Abuja had called in, and the, um, the gist of his was that he endorsed entirely your analysis, and he felt that, indeed, that was uh, as should be. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, moving forward. Um, I, I understand you would probably know better. There's a Gaji from uh, Plateau State and an Olawi from Kwara State, uh, both of whom have additionally uh, declared their interest. So I, I really see a very busy time you know, for a, a very busy time for members when they have been sworn in. Uh, this will be the first thing that they'll be doing. Sort of getting everybody, getting all your ducks in a row, getting everybody to be on the same page uh, so that we can uh, actually execute the project as, as best can be. Yeah, yeah, as you rightly put it, yes, uh, Right Honorable Ahmed, Idris Wasi from Plateau State, the current deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, is not the only contender uh, for the position of the House of Reps uh, speaker. Yes, right, like you said, we have two other persons who are also jostling for that. You've mentioned their names, so yes, I, have, I, have, I have trained my mind not to mention names of those who are contending positively or otherwise. So now that you have mentioned their names, I think I can speak to that. It is true, yes, they are running. One of them is from Plateau States, other is from Quara. They are all from the North Central. I think among the three of them, there is a common goal. The common goal that is driving them is that less the North Central must have this position. But as long as their interest in that regard is not distorted, we have no problem with that. But when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. But while moving towards the bridge and our preparedness cross it is what matters. We'll look at these three persons that are, are, are already in the market space. We that are working for WASI, we have a product we can market so easily, so simply, without, any, uh, without much of any problem. WASI, we talk about consistency, he has it. The only AC, the then AC, the only person was elected in 2007 into the House of Representatives on the platform of the then Action Congress AC from Plateau State. There was nothing like AC. It wasn't as popular as it, it, it later became in the North when was it contested on the platform of that party and won. So when it came to the House of Reps in 2007, it transmuted from there you know, I mean political platform-wise. So the then, so the defunct Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, he was elected on that platform, where he became the deputy minority leader to the current speaker. That was in 2011 or so. By 2015, Wase was already contesting for his third term on the platform of the APC that at then, that, that, that was... Uh, already uh, incubating. And by the time the party was finally, he became a member of the House of Reps for the third time. In 2019, he also won uh, another re-election that's still on the platform of the APC, and he has also won now in 2023. So if we talk about experience, we say we'll rather dispense experience and export experience rather than people looking for experience around him. So he's been there for five consecutive times. Experience speaks for him. Party loyalty speaks for him. In 2019, when I beg your pardon, Honorable, can wanted I, can to I, be speaker. Forgive me for interrupting you, Honorable. I'm so sorry. Uh, but uh, there's another uh, viewer has been waiting for quite a while. So I'm going to interrupt you, please. All right, and then okay, you can okay. resume. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, Mr. Joshua from Ire Walide, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for holding on. Okay. Thank you, Uncle Yori. Uh, good morning to you and good morning to your guest. 
Uh, from yesterday, we talked about uh, the uh, uh, Senate president and today the speaker. I I want to put the two together because it's the same arm of government. I totally align myself with uh, South South for the presidency of uh, the Senate uh, for political balancing. But the bigger issue on Kuyori is that uh, we need to build a national consensus on how to solve the problem at hand. I think this election is about actually uh, giving the responsibility or the mandate to rescue Nigeria, as it were, because uh, even if the present government has performed, you know that people are not connecting to their performance. So there's anger in the land. So there is something urgently that needs to be done. So I'm happy that the uh, president-elect started it by saying, I am going to raise the stake higher by having a government of national competence. So we need our people to understand the, uh, the need to build a consensus first. Leadership will work when we have an institutional consensus on solving a problem that has been identified so that everybody will not be engulfed. So I want them to be on the same page while we are balancing politically the regions. They should be on the same page with the president-elect to first identify competence, and then we can do other balancing. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joshua, and uh, once again for holding on all that work. Uh, it's important to us, and we know in these times when uh, Naira is not as a uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it, commonplace as it used to be. We're only just recovering. Okay, so back to you, uh, Honorable Donald. Um, I interrupted you as you were, you know, doing some sort of anal an analysis on the uh, sort of trilogy of Wase and, uh, you know, Gaji and Alawi, and you were, you know, explaining that. Please resume. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no problem about that. I think it was a, it was a very positive interruption, interruption, rather. The, the, the last speaker just provided a very valuable and, and immeasurable nexus for me to continue from where I stopped. And that is the truth. If we are building a national consensus, why are you building a national consensus? It is for us to strengthen democracy. It is for us to move democracy from where it is to a higher level, to a more valuable level. And that is what we are trying to do. The danger we are facing now, people might not see it as a danger. Out of the 360 lawmakers in the House of Reps, we have an unusual situation at hand. Less than 70, about 66 or 64, my figures will oscillate between 64 and 64, 64 uh, 6, are returning. Old members are returning. What am I trying to say? Over 220, some say 222, some say 220, but it's over 200 new members are coming in. So definitely we will expect heightened political activism because the number of youths who are coming in is even higher than the previous sessions of the, of the National Assembly that we have had, particularly with respect to the House of Reps. I attended a meeting where I saw young boys. I, 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 was, up, I was very happy. I marveled at the level of turnout of those in the youth brackets the youthful age that is coming on board. We are coming with a very serious zeal to participate in national politics and contribute to national development. In the course of contribution, this, there is this natural struggle, this scramble for scarce resources. How do we do it? If we do not have an able, efficient, competent, and a capable leadership, particularly at the level of the, national, uh, of the House of Representatives, then we are putting democracy in danger. And that is where the issue of Wase even comes in. Wase has been minority, deputy minority leader. He has been deputy majority leader. He has been chairman of several committees. He has been deputy speaker. And here is a man in 2019 when he was about shaking the table 
against the wish and desire of the leadership of the APC. The leaders came together. Said, look, gentlemen, leave this thing for this man, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, let him emerge as speaker. And he was asked to take up the position of deputy speaker. He took it. And from that moment till now, if my sense of history does not fail me, we have not seen much of turbulence in the National Assembly, particularly the House of Reps. That is leadership. Okay. That is leadership. Please. Another and caller. In any another case, caller wants in... to join the program. I beg your pardon. Another caller wants to join the program. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. George. Again, apologies for keeping you waiting, but I did want you know my guests to find a place to land. Uh, please go ahead, Mr. George. All right. Thank you, Uncle Eric. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Uncle Yoro, yes, yesterday I was not able to complete my thoughts on this subject. I'm happy you are bringing it up again. In the first place, Uncle Yori, this subject matter is being debated because the party, the APC, uh, they are still long to speak on where and where the, the positions should be zoned to. So because they have not done that, people like us are opportune to be making our own suggestions. It's in that line that I'm also making my suggestions. I was saying yesterday that the North, the Northern Governor, they, they have introduced integrity into this election by insisting that there should be a shift to this. They have the vote. And they know that whichever side they support, the votes will go to that side. But they left that and said, no, let it go to the South. John Koyori, from the debate going on so far, those ones from that north are not asking for anything. They are not debating anything. I'm not hearing from people from that area saying, we want this, we want that. That is also to, to, to say that we should imbibe that type of integrity that they are bringing into politics. Now, the Senate presidency, as I was saying yesterday, I think that it should go to the southeast. Because if you watch, you see that in this last election, APC has been able to gain more ground in the southeast. I was surprised to see that they could win Ebony State. You know, the governor of Ebony State, he comes from PDP to APC. I thought if a new election comes, they won't be able to retain the state. But they were able to retain the state. The same thing happened in, in Cross River, which is in Southside anyway, and they were able to retain that state. For me, Equity, fairness, and fair play demands that the Senate presidency should be given to the Southeast. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, Kalu, Oji Kalu, um, in the eyes of our law, he's not a criminal. If he was, he can't be the chief whip of the Senate. Even if you say it must not be given to a, part, a particular person, how about other senators of the, of the same party from that region? Okay. I am thinking that the APC as a party should use these positions to demonstrate that there is a new dawn in our politics. Okay, so that concludes your thoughts from that, yesterday. That but as you know, today we're focusing on the House yes. of Representatives. And I'm sure you have some thoughts. Yes, the, the speaker, in my view, for House of Representatives to go to the Northwest. The Northwest... If you, we, we know that the current president, the outgoing president, is from the Northwest. But are we going to leave the Northwest with nothing for four years, in spite of all that they have done to ensure that there is probity in governance? It will not be fair. North Central can take deputy Senate president. And I don't think that is too small for them. Okay. It's just my view. All right. Thank just you. Thank, Thank you very much. Um, I'm not too sure whether they want me to go on break or whether we can continue with this conversation. Um, but, oh, back to you, Honorable, since uh, they're not protesting. Uh, the producers are not protesting. Please, let's go ahead. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I saw that. Well, your smile was, uh, was part of the commentary, but since the gentleman did say his preference, uh, we are talking here about North Central. Uh, he said, well, that's, well, everybody has their own opinion, and uh, you heard it. Uh, uh Yes, we, we, we have, well, I, I must commend, I really appreciate the last, uh, 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 the last callers in their comments. They are very well-informed commentaries looking at, you know, looking at it dispassionately uh, where what should go to. 
it is true, we have a collective point of convergence, and that is Senate presidency coming to the South. Senate presidency coming to the South, we have that collective point of convergence. But when we talk about leadership positions in the National Assembly, it's not only the House of Reps, the Speaker of the House of Reps, that is there. It is not only the Senate presidency that is there. We have the Senate president, the Deputy Senate president, the Speaker of the House of Reps, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Reps. We have the leader of the Senate. We also have the leader of the majority leader of the House, so House of Reps. That is six. Then we, st we also have the whip of the House. We have the whip of the Senate. These are all principal offices. So no region, as it were, will be shortchanged. No region or geopolitical zone will be left out in the power equation. But one thing I must let people know is that, yes, we are not trying to force or bulldoze our way through. We are using every opportunity, every little opportunity we have to appeal to the conscience of the leadership of the party to consider the North Central for the speakership. That position has eluded the North Central for long. And we are strengthened by the fact that there is an available product that is very expensive, that is very valuable, that is very marketable. And that is the, our propelling force. If we did not have someone competent, someone efficient, someone who is capable, someone who has the capacity to drive what we are trying to market, wouldn't have been in this game. But because we have this twin advantage, of having somebody who is very competent, who is very versatile, and who has participated at various levels of leadership in bringing about national coercion and national development. We are encouraged to support him and added with the fact that his zone, where he hails from, has not done it before. In any case, in any case, the argument that we must bring on board the Southeast in the national leadership equation, it's a very valuable argument. That same argument go to Plateau State in North Central. We lost Plateau State, I mean APC lost Plateau State by the whiskers. Plateau State has been under the control of the APC for at least the last eight years, or uh, yes, the last uh, six or seven years. Now, we've lost it. Could that also not be a reason for us to also encourage Plateau State? No, well, that is just... Uh, a, a, mm -hmm. a joke, a roadside joke anyway. <laughs> but talking seriously, we must, yes, talking seriously, we must consider these issues dispassionately. We need a speaker who will be able to curtail the excesses of a rampaging youthful act, uh, group that is coming with much activism and curtail the excesses of an entrenched returning, uh, a group of returning members who are old. <laughs> we need a balance. We need the a balancer. Real, and a that balancer is... Uh, uh, let, let me yeah, 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 it must be, there must be a balance. All right. Uh, Kesandu, uh, in Oweri, Imo State. Good morning to you, sir. Uncle Yori, I greet you. And good morning to the Honorable. Yeah. Uncle Yori, I, I feel so sad in that my zone is not really put in the scheme of things to a reasonable Cambridge extent in this whole leadership tussle of the National Assembly, particularly the House of Representatives. Uncle Yuri, it, it, it may interest you that I also run for this House of Representatives under the YPP. Okay. But you see, in the course of this election, and I'm listening to the Honorable there, you and I will agree, or so many Nigerians will agree, that what we saw in the Ninth Assembly was not what Nigerians expected. They were using the whims and caprices of the executive, and it actually caused a whole lot of issues in this country. And that is the truth. No matter how stable the, the, the honorable feels that the House of Reps is as of today, but it is it's never stabled the Nigerians as a people. But the truth is, we want to know what these men are actually offering to the Nigerian people. Because it's not about party, like you said. The whole lot of persons, there are people from my political party who want the House of Reps in some state. So we want to see what they can offer to the people as we just leadership qualities because the word speaker should speak for the people. But unfortunately, they have not spoken for us as Nigerians. Most of us into, came into this contest or threw our heart into the ring because we want to make effective change legislatively. 
in Nigeria and quote and the human banner YouTube and double fellow consciousness in particular. That is for me. But this is what we want to see from these people. We want to see somebody who can assure and reassure Nigerians and not really the party. Because we have seen this party loyalty at something that, that has never benefited the people. Okay, let's say aside the court cases that we have, if we continue with the business of governance, it should be about the people, it should not be about the party, because this whole party thing has never occurred well with us for the last four years. And I can tell you that Nigerians are looking up to people that will follow the affairs of the National Assembly in such a manner that will be confident and comfortable that we can say no to Mr. President at some point. Because we didn't see it in the in the in the in the in, the, in this current dispensation. We saw a situation where the speaker, even the, the, the president at some point, the president at some point made comment like whatever the president thinks he's gonna sign it. So please. This is what we want to show. We want to show that the man is projecting, has the capacity, credibility, and competency to stand for Nigeria. That is all we're asking, and we're not asking for too much. God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much, uh, Kes Andrew, uh, for calling in from already. Did you uh, have any comments that you wanted to add to that um, contribution? Yes, uh, just, uh, uh, just uh, a commendation, because uh, uh, we can see we can see the patriotism, the fire of altruism, you know, passing through every strata of society in Nigeria. We have seen the last election. The message that was passed by the last election should be a lesson to everybody. Whether you are in the PDP, APC, APGA, Labour Party, SDP, ADC, or even if you are an independent uh, candidate, if the concern would have permitted that anyway. But coming to the House of Representatives, when you get to the National Assembly, I am not there yet, but as a journalist of over 25 years, with over 12 years as an editor who has covered politics in this country, I am quick to know, and I don't need anyone to tell me, that once you get to the chambers of the National Assembly, there is no more party segregation. There is no more party delineation that there is no more partisan differences. They are all members of parliament and they are all nationalists in both chambers of the National Assembly. So what we could deduce from this is that there is a driving force. The driving force is that once they get there, they put their parties behind them, think of Nigeria first. What they do there afterwards depends on the leadership there. But I can tell two things, two things. Takeaways from the outgoing session of the national, I mean the ninth session of the National Assembly. The, the PIB, now Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, have been indicated for over 20 years. The current National Assembly was able to do justice to it. It's a very historic decision that they took, very historic thing that has been planted for Nigerians. Yes, the benefits may not come in the next. In the, you know, in the next two, three years after the passage of that bill and the assent that was given to it by Mr. President. That is one. Then let us also look at our budget cycle. It used to be between May and June, but now the current National Assembly that is going through the instrumentality of strict and very effective leadership. Of course, when we talk about leadership, you cannot extricate, you cannot insulate the deputy speaker, you cannot insulate other principal officers. From, from, from the leadership I'm talking about. It has returned, if it was there before it went away, assuming it was there before, it has returned to the December-January period, which is very commendable. And where we have that, we could be sure of a, very, a greater percentage of budget performance. From what I gathered, I have not seen the, the evidence at hand, but from what I gathered even before my election, before our election rather, the budget performance is almost 100%. And the okay. propelling reason and then, for that would have been that the budget was passed on time. So that is also a very key thing that could be highlighted as a major achievement that we must commend the outgoing session for. It's also commended that we cannot do less. We cannot do less. But I got to bring in uh, um, uh, Mazi Okoroavo in Arochuku. Good morning to you, sir, uh, again. Good morning. Thank you for holding yes, good on. Good morning, Good morning, I guess. Yes. You see, this issue of uh, speakership, speakership, whether it's uh, president or speakership for House of Rep, 
As of yesterday, we just discussing this issue in our board in the beginning of our discussion in the meeting. Now, this thing is something for somebody who is a Democrat, who is ready to carry everybody along. And that is maybe it's around for maybe for North Central. Fine. Then, uh, Senate President for Southeast. Now, the question is this. I have seen that in Nigeria today, everything now turns out to win and takes off, which is not supposed to be there. It's what you call equity in any place we go. Equity must exist. And when equity exists, everybody becomes comfortable. Not when we go there, everybody that this one by post that it's not it doesn't make sense. If the speakership is for North Central, let me go for North Central. If Senate President for North uh, for South, let me go for the look, we have to very careful whatever we are doing so that to balance the question, irrespective of their political party. Let us forget about political party. Let us look for people that are not uh, men and women that are what that are ready to carry everybody in whether house of rest or senate. No one who come here is telling that it's just it is as if you are nobody nobody is, 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 has a full stop for anywhere. We can a speaker or a senate president, make sure you carry everybody. That is why you say everybody is glamorous, glamorous because everybody wants to be there, it's person to be there. So that we direct all these committees. In the course of these committees of different parasites, that, that is why you see everybody. Glamouring, glamouring. It must be my own. Look, let's not forget about selfishness or greed or trap or anything we are doing in this country. Let's not face that. That is why I say jangling, jangling. Look at the country like that. Half their self. All the senators, all the authorities, what have they achieved? They have achieved nothing as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So everything they continue going to go to, they are doing nothing. People are tired. Well, I, I got to interrupt you. Thank you for calling in, sir, so that uh, our guest can have a chance to, you know, you know, come in on your presentation. <laughs> Please go ahead, Donald. I, 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 I think that was a very beautiful uh, challenge. It's true because it's also not too good for in democracy for the winner to take off. But like I said, we had a very fierce battle fighting. Uh, during the last election. But one fundamental thing that shaped the outcome in various places of the last election is that individuals who merited victories were, were, were voted into power. Whether at the level of governorship or at the level of, uh, of, of, of the legislation. The examples are everywhere. Okay. Not the party. And where you have, yes, where you have where you have the advantage I'm afraid, of reaping I'm from sorry. the benevolence of people outside your party, then, then uh, you, have no, you, have, you, have, you have no business than to do otherwise, because than to make sure that everybody is carried you know, along. An outside broadcast. So I want to thank, I'm so sorry, thank you very much uh, for this. I'm so sorry about this rush, but we have to cut away uh, to a live feed. Once again, we really appreciate your coming on our program this morning. That's our program. Stay with us, please, uh, you, know, you know, as we continue. Uh, the rest of our broadcasts.